It really is a recognition of where the field is in terms of the study and delivery of care for cardiovascular patients. It, we envision the VMI as a sister institution organization to the Heart and Vascular Institute, which is really a clinical organization. The current and modern care of cardiovascular patients is very complex. It's really a recognition that no single specialty can really cover it. If we're going to do it right, if we're going to really understand how cardiovascular care needs to be delivered, how to understand how the disease processes come about, we really need to bring together people of many backgrounds. They may have trained initially as cardiologists, cardiac surgeons, pulmonologists, hematologists, vascular biologists, but we need to bring everyone together under a single roof so that we can really work together to transform how we understand, what we understand, and how we're going to care for these people in the future. Yeah, yeah. One of our major goals is really to uh, break down the barriers, the silos between disciplines of medicine and disciplines of science. Some of the most innovative research comes when you bring together people with expertise in cardiology, pulmonary, hematology, transfusion medicine. And one of the, the examples and one of the things we study within the Vascular Medicine Institute is pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension is a disease caused by proliferation and narrowing of the blood vessels in the lungs, so it's a vascular disease, but it ultimately then leads to failure of the right ventricle, and the cause of death is right ventricular failure. So you also have to understand how that right ventricle adapts to the changes in the pulmonary vasculature. And it's even more complicated than that because sometimes left heart failure, really the domain of cardiologists, can lead to changes in the pulmonary vasculature that then leads to pulmonary hypertension. Furthermore, there's systemic diseases like sickle cell disease uh, where hemolysis or anemia leads to the development of pulmonary hypertension and you need expertise in hematology or transfusion medicine. So one of the things we're really trying to do is, is break these barriers, really bring together scientists that understand heart failure, that understand the function of cardiomyocytes within the heart, that understand vascular biology, that understand many of these systemic disorders to really solve these problems together. And I think that's going to be a great forum for really innovative science. We believe that we are creating an environment which will allow the best and the brightest minds we already have in our institution to be most productive in this very complex multidisciplinary field. In addition, because we create that culture and we've gotten the resource investment from UPMC, it will allow us to attract even more talent who are currently very active in the research area into our institution. And potentially most importantly, it is envisioned as an organization that will really attract and train the leaders of the future in cardiovascular medicine. In addition to the traditional clinical excellence training that we have always provided, we have created new tracks for bench to bedside. We want to create a new, if you will, brand and generation of physician scientists who will be trained in clinical cardiology, but at the same time, they're going to go into and be exposed to advanced investigative work and become the leaders of the future in terms of science of cardiovascular medicine and we are creating an equivalent track for people who will look at the outcomes, the very important area of figuring out which therapy works best for which patient. So another generation of clinical leaders will not just be delivering care, but also be defining how we organize care and how we choose which care is best. And the whole program is really a recognition that you can no longer just train people and expect that they will gain this knowledge, that they need formal training, and we're creating specific tracks in each of these subspecialties. I think there's a number of areas that we would like to focus on. Um, one of them is the many faces of vascular disease. And this ranges from atherosclerosis, or hardening arteries that lead to myocardial infarction and stroke. It includes pulmonary vascular disease, which leads to pulmonary hypertension. This can include to vascular disease associated with metabolic syndrome, diabetes, many of the, the major uh, healthcare problems facing Americans today. Uh, there's other areas where we want to start focusing on understanding the interaction between aging and cardiovascular health, which is a major 
uh, problem again as our population ages. And finally, uh, we're putting great emphasis on the concept of precision or personalized medicine. And this is a growing field that incorporates genetics, uh, big clinical data sets or big data. And the whole concept is trying to understand which patients are going to develop more severe disease, more progressive disease, which patients have a particular type of disease that might be more responsive to a particular therapy. And by doing that, we can start to personalize both the diagnosis, the treatment, and the management in the community of patients that are more, are more at risk and may have more to benefit from a specific intervention or treatment. The Pittsburgh Heart, Lung, and Blood Vascular Medicine Institute is supported by the Institute for Transfusion Medicine, uh, a blood bank that cares for people in Western Pennsylvania and Chicago by the University of Pittsburgh and by the UPMC. And this broad commitment from these different organizations has really catalyzed this multidisciplinary research program. It really is an unheard of type of conglomeration where three such different institutions have invested so highly to create an organi organization whose main focus is to break down traditional barriers that have existed in academic medicine. It really allows us to focus on the disease that is affecting the patient in a multidisciplinary way to help us to understand it and to treat it in this very rapidly changing world.